Welcome ladies and gentlemen and everybody inside and outside the ballpark. My name is Novid Player and welcome to episode 29 of the Novid Notes podcast where we talk about many different types of creators and communities inside of VR chat. With me today, I actually have a very special guest who actually does all of the above when it comes to avatar creation, world creation, and communities as well. Uh, with me, I have uh, Volkashikt. Vol, welcome to the podcast. Hope you're doing well. Hello. I'm doing fine. I hope you're doing well as well. Also there, uh, Nova. <laughs> I'm Happy doing good. to get a chance to chit chat. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, kind of for the general listening audience listening at home, um, what exactly do you do inside of the VR chat platform? As you said, uh, a bit of everything. Uh, you know, I've, I make avatars, I make worlds. I am involved. I've been involved in several communities on and off uh, right now, most being uh, the improv community Skits and Bits, which I co-founded and uh, alongside you and many others, Project Community. Um, we both serve on the media team there. And but I've been part of uh, uh, other improv groups like Tuesday Night Improv. That was the first improv group I was a part of. And then uh, uh, I've moderated for some some of the OG content creators of VR chat. Uh, suddenly drawing a blank. Oh, you know, involved with VRCon when that was still going. Uh, other little minor projects here and there. To rest in peace, the D uh, Dimensional Postal Service and stuff. So. Yeah, of course. So, you know, I guess first and foremost, so you've been around uh, the platform for a very long time. So I guess one of the very first questions I want to ask, um, you know, what what got you into VR chat in the first place? OK, so. I was sent a video. Uh, I don't remember exactly when. From a, from a good friend of mine from high school uh, that it was probably one of those like VR in a nutshell videos. And um, I, I, I distinctly remember there was like a, this skeleton, somebody pushed a skeleton off the edge of, of a world. And then there was a chicken with a, with a broom. And then he's just like, I saw nothing. I saw nothing. It's just <laughs> like, that was the funniest thing. And I was like, it, I was kind of like taken aback because I was just like, what I, I had known about VR was what, um, like the the developer kit stuff that would show up on some YouTubers game footage or something like that because they have like but it was still just like three doff with a, with a controller it wasn't anything fancy and I was just like wait a minute it's like we're we're finally here it's gotten to this point that's awesome and it and because of that video uh, YouTube's algorithm did its thing and just started vomiting all of these VR chat videos uh, that were like really popular at the time. And I was like, I got fascinated with this. I, and there's kind of like one group of people that I ended up uh, like Nags 21 sphere, all the con him and all the content creators around him. I kind of watched uh, all their videos and stuff and was like super fascinated. And when I was at um, PAX East, in back in 2018, I think it was my first PAX, and Facebook had a huge VR presence there with the Oculus Rift, and I was just like, when I was there, I was just like, you know what? That's it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get VR. Uh, I want in on on that weirdness I'm seeing on that it looks like too much fun. And second, um my egg had just cracked so it was just like also like oh everybody's just an anime girl no one cares <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> so i uh you know i i got right in there and um just uh grabbed hold of my imagination it was um i remember getting on at like 10 o'clock at night when i first got my vr hooked up and i was like just gonna be on for a half an hour but I was so kind of blown away by my first experience in like actual VR, not like the shitty phone VR, that it suddenly was 2 a.m. And I was like, whoa, oh, I got to get up for work. <laughs> I, was, 
Uh, it was awesome. It was like it was still one of the most fun fun times I ever had in VR chat. Was the first night, which was thankfully. Uh, I have some video footage of that sitting on my computer somewhere because the first person I met was recording for their their own YouTube page, and it was like an early friend at the time. Uh, and at some point, they were like, "Oh, I, I still have that footage." And he's like, "You want it?" It's like, "What footage of my first day in VR chat?" Yeah, hell yeah, I'll take that. That's crazy. I couldn't. I couldn't imagine like. Oh God, I don't even know what, I don't even remember a lot of my first day of VR chat. That's really cool that it was like documented in that sort, you know, cause now you can always go back and look at it and be like, yeah, that's what happened then. This is what's now. Like, that's really cool. Um, so I guess, you know, kind of to go on further into the topic. So, you know, you, you said it was, uh, if I remember correctly, it was like early 2018, uh, when you started uh, doing VR chat. So yeah. I guess one of the questions, cause you know, you've been around for so long. Um, what kind of got you into like development and like creation when it comes to, like avatars and worlds? I actually started make working on an avatar before I even got my VR. I was like, I knew I was going to get it. And I was like, I, I, I want to come in with like my own thing. I was like, I don't want to just come in with like a default or whatever like that. I'm going to come with my own thing. But uh, I knew next to nothing about modeling at the time. Um, but I was aware of Blender. And that's like what everybody was using for VRChat. And so I, I just did what I've always wanted to do, but like had no motivation or like focus. Uh, to do it, which was finally learn how to 3D model, <laughs> uh, make 3D assets, you know, texturing everything and all. And I just followed a bunch of tutorials on, on YouTube, and it, that's what got me started on, like, the creation. And it was, um, that, that avatar never saw the light of day. I think the project doesn't exist anymore, but, uh, it did launch me into, um, knowing how to do that stuff. And uh, it, it, it started hitting a bug, but what really hit, hit like a, the creative juices was when I um, made my first world, which is funny, is still my home world. Um, and because I made that in like just a weekend, I was like, uh, like suddenly like hooked because I, I, I had a medium where I was getting like the results of what was in my head faster than all the other art forms that I have done, like film or uh, audio or drawing or painting. Uh, it's like I was like I get what I want more close to what I want in this this medium, and uh, I just like dove head first into that. Um, not like a super prolific world maker. It takes me a long time to make them, uh, usually because I'm busy and because I can't help myself but keep exploding my projects to 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 large sizes. But um, it, I really like it, and and it's it's uh, you know led to you know other other avenues of of creativity, um, like a you know VR filmmaking and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So I you know kind of to go. Um, a little bit more into the world and avatar side a little bit. Um, cause quite frankly, you do a lot. There's a lot to talk about and I'm super excited. Um, <laughs> so kind of to go into depth with the avatars a little bit. Um, so you actually do have, uh, if I remember correctly, you have two, uh, avatars in particular yes. that are, you know, featured, mm -hmm. uh, within VRC fallbacks. Um, so out of curiosity, yep. what, what kind of led to the creation of those? I remember, uh, I I don't know if I had my first like handmade uh, avatar because I was using a an Alice a, a model of Alice which was like a French vocal that I had no idea at the time I just saw it on my first night in VR chat and just used it for like a year um, but it did set the stage for like my aesthetic because there was like the pink eyes and the blue hair and stuff um, and, and but then I was like, oh, 
I've got all these, like, tiny friends. And sometimes it hurts being this tall and looking down on them. And there was no, like, height, easy height changing like there is now. Um, and so I was like, I'm going to make, like, a little whale minion that's, like, their height that I can, like, switch into to, like, converse with those friends. Um, and then at this, the time that I was working on that, VRChat announced, it was like, we want new um, default avatars. Because uh, they were just using a whole bunch of ones, like, they were, like, free ones off the Unity store. And uh, I was like, oh. And they're like, we were looking for, like, really unique stuff and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I was working on a whale. Uh, a, like, an anthropomorphic whale that was stuck on a pair of robot legs. Uh, and I was like, you know what? I don't think anybody's going to be making something this weird. So I'm going to clean this up, make it a little more presentable, and submit it. Uh, and it was like right when they, when like the, in, the the first quest came out, so they were like it, it had to have the quest, uh, you know, doobly's on it. And uh, I was I did not expect to like get it accepted. I was like I I thought I had like a decent chance because of like how I don't think anybody would be making an avatar to look like this. <laughs> and. But I, I didn't expect to suddenly get an email from, I believe it was an email or uh, a, uh, a, a private message on Twitter from VRPill, who was like, hey, uh, I think they were just telling me, I was like, hey, you're, you know, your avatar has been selected for to be in the thing. Uh, and then just telling me, it's like, hey, you might get increased attention, so like, be extra cautious on like your accounts and stuff. Make sure, <laughs> uh, you know, whatever. Some friendly reminder uh, on that stuff. But um, I was just like, what? Uh, so <laughs> my little Moby Whale. Oh, well, actually, he's not little. He's pretty. He's like pretty tall compared to most avatars. Um, you know, he was on there for a long time. He's still in the legacy row. Um, when they had the avatar jam uh, two years ago, I think it was. Mm -hmm. I I was like, I'm gonna do it again. And I came up with another like Aqua Sapien to um be part of my whale face industries mythos. Um and I submitted him. I from the ground up I designed it to be to to be work well and look good on Quest so that it also did so on PC. And um it's like right on the edge. I think it's exactly like ten thousand uh tries. And I, I took every little corner and did every little trick, you know, like even modifying the normals and all that to make it look nice in the restrictions we have. And <clears throat> I, uh, and then boom, I was suddenly surprised that it was in that list of, of 100 that were accepted into the new list. I was like, yeah, I got two of them in there now. Uh, and, um, so yeah, you know, that was cool. It was just, it was just like, you know, the call would go out, and I would, I would make something for it. I, and oddly enough, I find when I'm not making the avatar for myself, and it's like for something else, then it's like I get them done faster, and they, I, I'm more satisfied with them. When it's for me, it's like I spend like months before I'm like, oh, I can kind of call this finished, but I, I end up hating it after a while. <laughs> um, which is why I just use like, you know, I've just been using Runa for a while now because it's just like I like it enough. But, um, but fair enough. What was I talking about? <laughs> You're talking about uh, like the 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 legacy avatars and like how you got the second one in. Um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I heard recently that uh, there's there's somebody that, at VR Chat who uses one of those exclusively uh which i i found very flattering so that's um, that's really yeah, cool. that's awesome hell yeah so you know kind of th which is really cool that you know because i couldn't imagine having a creation that essentially any vr chat player is able to get you know within their because i believe they're all in the in the home world aren't they still or is it just in the is in the menu now i never it's been a long time since I've been in the regular VR. I mean, they're, they're always in the menu. <laughs> uh, I don't know how the ones in the at Homeworld works. I've that's never been my homeworld. Um, 
you know, ever since I made mine, that's always been my where I end up loading in. Um, so, uh, but when I'm there, it's like, I don't know if they cycle through randomly or if that's always just like the same block of them, because that's definitely not the entire selection. Uh, but, um, I don't know. Maybe it pops up in there sometimes. It, you can see, you can see Al, Alex, the, the second avatar I made. It's like, you can see the little guy in like some of the graphics that pop up in your face with like the warnings and stuff. Fair. Um, so that's, that's really cool though. That's, uh, there's not a lot of people that can say that, you know, they, their <laughs> avatars they made can do that. So that's, that's, that's really cool. Um, so I Thank guess, you. yeah, of course. Uh, I was say, so in that regard, you know, cause I know there, when it came to the whale specifically, um, there was a few short videos that you had made, uh, in regards to it. So I, I'm curious out of curiosity, what kind of started the whole whale face industries, uh, like videos series that you did? Well, all those videos are actually, uh, the ones that have like, you know, the whales and stuff, them are promos for worlds. Uh, so like each time I make a world, there's only, there's been the first world I made and the last most recent world I made. I've not actually, no, that's not true. There's a one-off world that I also didn't make a trailer for. But one of the ones that I like want to have more fanfare to it, I make a trailer for it um, and um, try to do some more something kind of more fun and cinematic. And there is the, the whale phase thing. Um, uh, if you didn't know, that's what my name means. It's whale phase, um, which is a shortened from what used to be. My name used to be a whale with a phase. Uh, I just got shortened down, and then I was like in the height of my of like studying German at the time. So when I joined VR Chat, I thought at the time thought it was funny just to add some extra level of abstraction to it. Um, but when I started making like my own content, I was like, uh, I, I I wanted to have some connecting theme between all of it, to have like some sort of brand, for lack of a better word. Uh, of uh, of this like connected universe between like the, the avatars I'm making and the worlds I'm making, um, and so there's like this, you know, just came with the idea of like you know some sort of kind of uh, oh sorry for my jumping around because I just realized where it kind of started. From. I used to do art streams, and I would have uh, near the end of my art streams, I was starting to take these like suggestions from from friends and viewers of combining two animals and making these chimeras. Um, and that's where that idea came from, was that like Whale Face Industries was like, they were making like crazy uh, genetic an an anomalies and stuff, like uplifting these whales and turning them into minions to work for the laboratory and stuff. So it's... Uh, just like a tongue-in-cheek, like a, a mad science vibe, um, vibe to it. Uh, so it's like usually with these maps, it's like you know the poor whales are being sent in. <laughs> Fair enough. No, that's really cool. I actually didn't know you did art streams. That's a I learn learn something new every day, chat. Um, but yeah. but yeah, so so that's really cool because you know making chimeras. Um, and it just kind of, you know, went into the VR chat realm, and that's that's really cool. I'm I'm, I'm very I don't know. I'm just very those that type of stuff like interests me, um, because there's so many different ways people come up with ideas when it comes to like world or avatar creation. Um, so to do like a like a hybrid fusion of two not mammals but animals in general, um, it's it's definitely yes. yeah <laughs> yeah I I got it this time I promise I'm working on it uh, but 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 yeah so so out of curiosity kind of to you know delve off the developing side a little bit so you you talked about you know working with all these communities um so out of curiosity you know what kind of drove you to like go into like hanging out and working with communities like what started it all um weirdly enough um, 
despite having like pretty bad like uh like uh, anxiety <laughs> i sometimes am drawn to uh trying to make things happen um or like i see like the need for it uh it's like at college i i ended up running both the tv and radio station at the same time uh because i especially with the tv station so like it it needed some work to like get up so like me and my friends made me you know made the first tv show on the station like a long time and everything so it was uh and even before that when i was just a little kid i was like trying to I, I was able to like wrangle fr like friends off the playground together to like spend their lunch to read scripts I wrote, thinking I was gonna make a movie. Uh, and I, I guess it's just kind of like there, where where uh, as long as like it's like something I feel like kind of confident in, I end up like trying to step up to like be part of it in some way. Um, like I used for those content creators um, that I used to moderate for. Uh, I would run like community meetups because it was like these people in these discords weren't, you know, they were chit chatting, but they were never meeting each other. It's like, yes, want to, like, why don't we do stuff every once in a while? So we, I used to start those out. Um, and even though I was part of Two Standard Improv for a while before I got into um, VR Chat Improv, it was in VR Chat Improv slash uh, Gobs Improv Emporium when it changed its name. Where I like really got involved with community like uh, uh, running things, and you know I was part of the production staff at some point there. Um, got really involved and had like a big big part in how things were done. Um, and you know, unfortunately, you know, in the simplest terms, there was some uh, falling out between. Me uh, me and the person that ran it. So I ended up leaving, and not too long after that, that group fell apart, and uh, all my friends and stuff that were still there, they, you know, uh, the two that co-founded Skids and Bits with me, they, they came to me, and they were like, hey, will you help start this community with us? Because, like, we don't want Improv to die in VR chat. Um, and I was like, yeah! I've been wanting to come back for a long time, um, and, and that, that's kind of like how, just how it started. So like in, with uh, in be, with uh, doing so much with skits and bits, and just like trying to uh, really make this very friendly uh, and inclusive like improv environment has led us to interact with and uh, collaborate with other communities, which then <laughs> just gets me involved in those communities because like oh I like these people, so I'm gonna stick around and do things with them. Um, and of course, with VRCon, when I was like out of the previous InGrav group, it was like, you know, I needed to fill the void. And, uh, you know, Emma, at the same time, she left the same time I did uh, that improv group. And so we both got hired onto VRCon uh, and got really involved with that. Um, and then when folks left there to form Project Community, we went with them. Um, and... So doing all the stuff there and getting really so skits and bits and that doing those things um, and then sometimes uh, just from knowing people like uh, Dusty Dust Bunny um, from uh, who who runs and created the VRDA and was also in um, we met in VR, virtual reality uh, you know I, I, she used to come to our, our shows uh, at the old group all the time that's how I got to know her um, and she was like a champion for our group so then when she was forming this um, rain dance immersive show recently I you know I was asked to join that as as a as a main character to act in it and uh, you know I got so that was a whole new project to be part of that was the first thing where I wasn't in a long time where I wasn't like running anything. I was just, I just had to act, and there was like a bit of relief to that because I should have to be doing it. But um, I don't know. I I I've just been around long enough that I've, I've kind of met uh, a lot of people, and those people know people. So I just I just end up if there's something cool that I want to get involved in, I I, I usually try to put people into it. Fair enough. Yeah, VR Chat's a it's a very interesting platform that 
you meet one person and you essentially meet 10 more because of that one person. Um, it's a, it's definitely an mm -hmm. interconnecting web of, you know, constant meeting people. Um, so kind of, cause you talked a little bit about it. Um, you know, cause I, I, I did want to go into the filmmaking side a little bit, uh, the, or the shorts and skits and whatnot. Um, so before we go into, uh, skits and bits, cause man, I'm, I'm excited to talk about that topic. Um, so, you know, the, the film that you, you were, uh, acting on. So correct me if I'm wrong. Did it, was, was it a winner of rain dance or was it just a nominee? Oh no, it won, it won the spirit of rain dance award, which was like one of the overall awards. So it was, uh, it wasn't a film. It was a live, um, interactive, uh, performance, uh, primarily dance. But there were uh, acted segments in between the dance segments um, that, that I was part of to help uh, navigate, to facilitate the story um, and guide the audience through these various dances that are connected to beats in the story. And um, uh, it was a very multi uh, discipline thing going on there. So, because it had so many aspects to it, like the, the rain dance was just like this kind of encompassed like all like the things that make green dance great that we, you know, we're going to give you guys like the overall award for the, the thing. So that was, that was actually really, really awesome. Cause it was like at the awards, you know, they announced who got the best like dance performance and, and it wasn't, we weren't mentioned and it was like, Oh no, that's a bummer. Oh, well, uh, I guess we'll just uh, sit back and enjoy the rest of the thing. And then <laughs> they got to that award at the end. And it was like, and then started alluding to the people that started the project. And I was like, wait a minute, there's no way. It's like, sure enough, our project uh, won that award. So that was, that was awesome. So it was like in the same month, uh, it was like I had gotten, we got the, the telly thing. And then the end of the month, it was like, we got, it was a weird reversal in the same month. Yeah, no, that's really cool. Because... Yeah, like you say, like Project Community had gotten the Telly Award, and then Rain Dance like immediately after. So that's really cool. Like, uh, congrats first and foremost on you know, on both of them. Um, <laughs> so, you know, kind of, kind of to go in, you know, kind of go back into the history, the timeline a little bit. So, what got? Uh, well, I guess I should introduce first. So, for the general listening audience, um, you kind of briefly explained it, but more in depth, like. What is Skits and Bits? Skits and Bits. Skits and Bits is uh, an improv community. We uh, are there for the education and physician of like the art form of uh, improv, both comedy and um, drama. Um, primarily comedy, uh, but we have uh, a narrative. Uh, we we do we offer. Currently, are running our second run of the uh, narrative improv class by our uh, uh, one of our staff members, uh, Nithya, and uh, that's that covers more like doing kind of um, like plays, like improvised plays, and um, but we every week we try to um, cover a new topic on a on a uh, Saturday workshops. We got a new host every week to you know, keep things going to give everybody a chance to either learn something new or sharpen their skills. And we're open to all skill levels. If you're a beginner, if you're a pro, you know, that just wants to keep things sharp. Um, we try to, everybody is welcome to come in and uh, participate. Uh, and we try to keep like an open arms policy and, and, you know, especially with, uh, some of our experiences of previous groups and stuff. We, we, you know, we're trying to, we don't see all like the improv groups. There's there's no reason for us to have to compete with each other. It's like we all want to to have fun doing this. So we try to you know maintain friendly ties with all the groups out there, or even help some. Um, like we we kind of like gave some advice and 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 aid with the when the improvatars moved over to VR chat, they closed and you know other places. And even, you know, there's been some groups that have formed out of skits and bits, like Jackal Ears, which was a long-form improv group. Um, uh, but other than that, we try to serve as a hub for collaborative uh, VR 
theater projects. So people can come in and like they're like, I'm doing this thing. Either it's you know, a role play or uh, a show or whatever. And um, folks from our community can go and like help out with those or get involved in them. And uh, you know, we want to be a place where those connections can be made and facilitated because it's like uh, we're all getting a chance to define what it means to do performance art in VR, uh, which I, I am immensely, I find immensely satisfying to, to be there at the beginning for all of it and help to shape what that means. Um, and, and like this kind of just all, all my, my main goal, you know, it's skits and bits. It's, it's, other than just being able to do improv comedy again is, in helping to, you know, define how the performance arts happen in VR uh, has been a lot of fun. Because it's like, there's things you can do in meat space that you can't exactly do here because you know, they either require touch or there's that degree of latency. It's like, well, how do we deal with that? And you can see other, you know, like even like the filmmaking groups, like the, the fight choreography folks that have figured out how to to deal with that you know we have to deal with our own thing like how do you deal with that live uh and uh, it's like if there's you know trying to figure out even uh, like how do you do musical improv with that problem um and which we have us and like our um members who have done other projects you know have been trying to tackle and uh it's it's just it's like i said before like very satisfying to to be able to be at that point uh with all of it so yeah we also do our own shows and and uh uh short films and, and sketches and stuff no absolutely and funny that you mentioned like you know doing the live shows and doing the you know the the short film so you know uh last year um, if you could believe it, it was already a year, um, you guys actually had, uh, at Project Lens, you guys had the Great Meatball Heist, um, which was hands down, uh, hands down, in my opinion, one of the best films that was showcased uh, at Project Lens. So <laughs> I, I will say, <laughs> thank so, you. So kind of to go into it a little bit, um, because you've done other ones as well, um, but you know, the great meatball heist. So correct me if I'm wrong. Um, that entire short film was all improvised, correct? Yes. Um, there, sometimes we'd, we'd go in like with like, uh, an outline of ideas. Um, so it's like, these are the, the kind of chain of events over the course of the film that we think we want to hit. Um, sometimes they completely change. Uh, cause we just like hit epiphany with like how the story is going to go. Um, but the, what exactly how it's being shot, uh, and how it's being acted and what the lines are saying are on the spot. Um, and sometimes when, when somebody does like stumble on like a line, we all like, that's, that was amazing. Uh, we, we do keep it and like have them repeat that for, for new tanks and stuff. Um, but it is, there was no writing happened, uh, only minor preparations in terms of like getting ideas of how like things go. But even then, uh, one, one part that people seem to connect with the most was with a character named little meatloaf. Um, his, his journey, uh, was we got on, on set, we ended up at a farm and it was, uh, or it might've been just a road. Cause we know we needed the person to chase the tire. And somebody was like, oh, here's a map I have that I found it. And it was like, there was a farm there. And I was like, okay, so what are we, what is the conflict for this character? Because I knew you can't just have random weird stuff happening. Because it's just like, it could be kind of funny here and there. But like, the, the characters need to go through something uh, uh, to, uh, to really kind of connect with the audience and, and enhance the humor. So, uh that's I made it a point that each character had to have some arc of some kind to go through towards the end. Like they had to come out changed in some way, with one exception, which was the Karen. That was the joke of it. Is that she? <laughs> she's a Karen. She's not going to learn anything. 
Uh, and ends up, you know, when she had her, her, her learning moment, she ended up just kicking them off a cliff. Uh, um, but, um, yeah, so just even, and then, uh, because I've, um, you know, I've been doing, like, film and video for over 10 years, it's like a lot of uh, the techniques and stuff are just, like, think are now, by this point, um, uh, like second nature in terms of like the the uh, conventions of filmmaking so like i can like just look at the scene and be like see what angles or shots can be done and just like plop like the virtual camera down get the settings in, and then being like okay this is the power dynamic between these characters we need to have the camera like this and blah blah blah, blah and uh to get the the mood that i want for for that for that moment in the scene Fair. No, that's really cool. And I, I love the fact that, because I was like, you already touched topic on one of the things, was giving each character a storyline. Um, so, yeah, you're already beating me to punches, which is fine. Um, so, <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. Real quick, just want to pause the episode real quick. I want to thank you all so much for watching, and, and I hope you're enjoying the content. However, I do have some amazing people to thank because they were so graciously to help fund the throne for the new setup we are currently over 40 percent as this episode is getting edited i do want to thank some individuals all of course the anonymous gifters but specifically i want to thank volkasect blep emma torch down lyric asher derora kjd monk 42 and sonic man 7708 for all the amazing generosity you guys are absolutely a blessing and i can't thank you enough for the amazing stuff if you would like to you know help me over on throne to help crowdfund the new setup to improve some of the content you see uh make sure to go check that out but let's get back into the episode Woo! but no that's really cool uh so i guess one of the questions i wanted to ask um is there any type of plan for maybe a sequel to the great meatball heist maybe i i know that one of our the person who played uh john balupi uh his name is bunny rip seven he's been a member of skits and bits from the beginning uh involved in like everything uh and he apparently he said he's written a script for a sequel um I haven't seen it. It could be a jumping off point. I, I think personally, I think we might just, I, I would prefer to like have it still be like fully improvised. Uh, and it's a collective thing. Like even the, it's not like my decision. I, even though I was the actor uh, and cinematographer and editor, I didn't, uh, did I say the actor and not director? Yeah, you did. <laughs> I didn't act in that film at all. I was the director, cinematographer and editor, but it was the decision of everyone, like all the crew and cast, as to like how this film was being made, which you'd think would be a disaster. But uh, because we're all improvisers, like it's like we know it's like this is what we do. It's just when we our our whole thing is just like figuring out where the story's gonna go and like committing to it. Um, so once that we hit an idea that we're like, oh, that builds on that thing that just happened, we're going in this direction. So there's not like too much, uh, too much time wasted in terms of deliberating on that stuff. Fair. So I guess kind of, uh, kind of to ask another question about the the film. So you know, because you 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 were the director, cinematographer. Um, so out of curiosity, how long did it take you guys to film the entire thing all together? We, uh, it was kind of off and on, like, weekends over the course of, like, the whole summer. Uh, I think we started shooting some in, like, maybe late spring or something. I don't fully remember anymore. But we had gotten the ball rolling, got some stuff shot. Then there was, like, a, a break in between because there was, like, s some stuff we had to do. Like, a bunch of us went to Switzerland to meet up. Um, and... But eventually, when Project Lens happened, it was like when it was announced that it was happening and when it was happening and the criteria and all that, I was like, we have a deadline. We are premiering this film at this festival. This is when we need to have it done. And that's when we got like kicked into high gear. And, uh, and that was incredibly stressful month for me. Uh, 
trying to get the film done, and in between all that, editing it, uh, and trying to come up with, like, you know, the general story beats and stuff we're going to go through. It was in organizing all of it. Uh, uh, on top of, at the same time, getting ready for our first year anniversary show, and then eventually having being contacted and and by by uh tvrs and fia to collab with them on a murder mystery so we had like three huge things going on at the same time and it was like non-stop work of like all of august and and september and thing but pleasantly surprised that we swept everything except choreography at lens i don't know why i feel kind of bad <laughs> i don't know if we deserve all of those, but uh, it happened. People voted that way, and that's how it went. But uh, I'm glad we didn't get choreography because I would have been like really embarrassed. Like we didn't do any choreography. So there's <laughs> no, there was nothing. So, uh, but um, uh, I guess people liked it. Uh, so I'm, which is just, which is what I want. If if I can inspire other people with the art I make, that's that's well, that's what I want. No, absolutely. And that's, you know, stuff like that is one of the reasons why I made this podcast was because, you know, quite frankly, there are so many different people with different outtakes of life and different passions, you know, and it's all, you know, for the enjoyment, 90, 99% of them when it comes to it, it's for the enjoyment of others, you know, so it's really cool to, to see the passion behind it. Um, so I guess kind of, kind of to go a little bit a little bit 180 on the topic so you know with you been around for so long um what's something from you know the 2018 era um that maybe not a lot of vr chat players know about to this day like what were some of the, what were some of like the greatest experiences back then that may not exist today one of them is uh, there were no home worlds uh there was just the hub and everybody would load into the hub together. So, I mean, it wasn't like only one hub. I mean, there's more instances of it. But um, it, that was kind of like the way you met people at first. Uh, and that's how I met the first like group of friends I had at the time. We're not really, we don't hang out at all anymore. But um, you'd go in and there'd just be people you didn't know. And they'd come up to you, you'd go up to them, and you were just talk. <laughs> and just act, just be goofy. Uh, it was like time in VR chat where like everybody was just, um, just doing weird stuff and role playing. <laughs> like, that was a lot of, a lot of that. Uh, and because um, everything was just new. It was like everybody just wanted to experiment with this, like what you could do in this, this new world. And... Um, so just hopping into, I kind of miss that, in a way, of, of it just being dropped into this 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 world with like all these other people. Um, I, it'd probably be a disaster these days if you did that. Uh, Fair, you know, if, if, if the black cat can can attest. But um, that 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 was the experience. You know, I, I do miss that in a in a way. It's like that that kind of uh, more innocent. Sense, sense of things at the time. I think when I joined, um, it was like right at like just as the Knuckles thing was about to hit its peak. Like I joined in right before that. Uh, so like I could start, you know, I saw that stuff going around. Um, so like the VR chat numbers were still like not like 60,000 a day like they are now. It was like just a few thousand. So there were there was like a as many people from back then will say it's a uh, a lot. It felt like a cl tighter knit group of people, um, and there were there was um, nowhere near as many worlds as there are now. Um, there's like so many that you just I, I'm amazed at some of like the really good worlds out there that nobody that I didn't even know about. Like I just stumble across or some other friends stumble across or somebody on my Twitter feed shows. But back then, there was, like, some, like, the good-looking maps, like, would not be... You, I wouldn't say that about them now, except for the Great Pug. Great Pug still looks great, but, like, Gaia Knight, 
I have a lot of fond memories of, of Gaia Knight where if my if I had no friends on, um I would go to Gaia Knight, sit up on the cliff, and just watch all the people like showing off their avatars, because that's where you would go to show off like crazy animations you have. Uh and just the music from there is like really mellow. Uh like the even when I was there at the time, it like invoked a feeling of nostalgia. Um it's like just as the old loading music. Like even like I just joining VR chat every time I went to that tunnel, the loading music was like it's like I'm experiencing this now, but it feels like this has existed like long before me. I don't know what the, is up with that music, but that's the case. Yeah, it's it's definitely nostalgia inducing to say the least. Even if like, because I I know there's a few players that are on my friends list that never experience, you know, the that music or the original loading screen, and it's it's a whole different ball game, like. When when they released the whole ten year anniversary version of the home world and it had that tunnel, like I, I know people that oh, were, yeah. they, they I know people that literally cried because it was a different era. It was a different time for VR chat. And all the memories just came flooding back and you know, it's I it, know, yeah, yeah. It's all different now. It's just it was such a uh I hesitated to say innocent because of, like there was still like it's just off the wall, off color stuff happening too, as there has been forever. Uh, even like Duckles itself is <laughs> questionable to it. Um, but uh, it's it was like people. It was still just like this feeling of play, um, and you know there wasn't like really much. Wasn't sitting. You were always doing something and exploring something. Uh, and there was like, you could just do, uh, there's, you know, people, do, the content creators all the time, all they were doing were just like sharing their experiences, just hanging out with people in VR chat. There was no like gimmick, no story or anything. So there was like, you know, there, missing that kind of period of time too is, is uh, yeah. but at the same time, there's a lot of things that we have now that, make life so much nicer um that you know and, and other things that are like I, I wouldn't give up that i have now just so i could have that back but um you know i think you know a lot of the changes were for the better but it's just losing some of that that, that the feeling from then is can't help but tear up a little bit when if you've ever been to the the new old hub mm -hmm. um and it's got the secret uh, passage underneath. Yep. It goes down to the memorial to 2017 VR chat. That's like, and it plays the old loading theme song, and it's just got everybody's name up in the communities that, that existed at the time. And like, there's even names up on the wall of, of people I know. Uh, and, uh, even like the saying, you know, that it has on, on like the, on like the obelisk in there about like, um, uh, like a really bittersweet saying it was along the lines of like cherishing something about like cherishing memories or, or time that we had that no longer exists or something like that but uh yeah you know it's still like a very emotional to go down go down go down there and show people but no absolutely because it, it like a lot of people from that era say it's it's not the same as it once was you know it's a lot of things change, you know, whether it's for the better or worse, you know, it's really ultimately up to the community, but, um, but yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not definitely not one of those who are just like, ah, it was better back in, it was, it was back in my day. <laughs> hey, my VR chat was much nicer than this VR I, I, I hate that kind of mentality. It's like, we, it sucks that we don't have the same exact experience we had for like at least two years. Uh, but, you know, the things that are happening now are like the same feelings that new players are having. Like they're going to look back into like now and think the same thing. So it's, um, you know, it, you just, just continue to try and like, you know, uh, let what you have now making new, Awesome memories. 
Fair enough. Um, yeah, I was I was gonna say it's like realistically as I'm experiencing lag. Let me fix that. There we go. Um, but yeah, no, as as <laughs> we experience VR chat now, um, like you, I mean, you said it best. Give it a couple of years down the line, and you know, some people will consider this the golden era of VR chat. You know, and it it's always gonna be that no matter how many years this platform survives, um, or it gets you know upgraded down the line to VR chat too for who knows whatever reason. Don't don't VR chat. I, if any of y'all are watching this, don't you dare call it VR chat too. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, like just keep it as VR chat. Yeah, and your call company it a day. has to exist <laughs> right. until I die. I can't outlive it exactly um but yeah so no it's really cool uh first and foremost like it's really cool to kind of you know because we we you know we're both part of the project community staff so we've you know worked with each other for a while um ha, segue fun fact uh wall here was actually the uh director videographer for the project horrorcon announcement trailer um yeah Go make sure to check that out. Um, <laughs> short, short segue. <laughs> um, there's going to be a whole segue of that. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it, but there will be an episode uh, first Saturday of October. You'll want to keep your eyes on in regards to Project Horicon. But that's not what this episode's about. Uh, but yeah, no. So, you know, for I guess kind of just to teeter that line a little bit. Um, cause we are running a little bit out of time. Actually, I'm surprised it's already almost been an hour. Um, uh, oh no. <laughs> um, so you actually, in, in the trailer, you actually made the world and the avatar, uh, that was used. Um, so out of curiosity, how long did that take to kind of like throw together? Uh, not too long. Cause it was, um, the world was created using, um, this like pirate village asset pack that I got uh, on sale on Unity during, like, one of the one of their big sales. I, every once in a while, it's just like, oh, oh, that whole thing looks cool. That would be really cool to make a world out of. And there's, like, it's, like, 50% off. I'm going to grab it. Um, and then I don't use it. <laughs> but uh, it, that it was, like, when, when I found out that this year's Horicon was going to be, like, deep sea horror themed, I was like, this is my aesthetic. <laughs> like, I love this shit. So I immediately had like an idea for like what the sign up video could be. And I was like, I have all the assets for this. Um, and I just had to, I uh, just laid out the world with uh, the pirate things. Um, grabbed some weather uh, assets I had for like rain uh, and like running water off of like the roof and stuff. Um, took it, you know, threw in Poyomi's water shader to get those crazy waves, uh, threw in some fog, uh, had my, um, uh, one of our staff members at Skits and Bits, who's also on, like, our world dev team, uh, their, uh, Salon Tro, uh, their folks in the, in the roleplay community will probably know who she is, uh, she's big over there, does a lot of work there, um, and has her own like workshops on like role play, and she uh, had created a a sky box shader. It was somebody just kind of took apart the red sim one and like modif added a whole bunch of modifications to it to make it more space oriented for like projects she was working on. So I um I was like I need a I was having frustration with like getting the night sky the way I wanted it. Um. I was like, I, I, I went to her and was like, I need, I need a night sky. I can control the weather and all the, everything is like, she's like, I gotcha. <laughs> and just show, you know, show me all the things and like hand it over like her, her like sky boxes that she had and stuff. And uh, that, that was a big help in getting that up there. And um, the, the guy that you played, I, uh, was this fisherman um, asset that I had. Uh, you can actually, like, swap different outfits and stuff around. But I thought, because of the weather, that having him in that classic, like, uh, uh, 
you Gordon's want. fisherman outfit uh, <laughs> would, would fit the theme really well. And um, I, uh, the only thing I had to do was I had to give him visings. He did not have uh, visings. Um, so all he had was like a jaw flap. And I thought, that's not going to look great. And for some reason, when you choose jaw flap in VR chat, the mouth just hangs open. I, I still have not figured out how to like not get it to do that. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I added visings to it um, and a few alterations to like get it to work. Uh, that I think that's what took the most time because there was something effed up with the texturing and stuff. I had to like fix some stuff in it, but um, but once once it was together, it worked. Got that together, uh, and then um. Then we just we had Emma stand up with the Horicon mascot at the end, and then I went into Blender and did a fluid simulation uh, of a thing rising out of the sea, and then composited that into that footage so that he could have like the skeleton splooshing out of the ocean. That was um... that was really cool because I, you know, as somebody who was actually there, like seeing it recorded live like that was not a part of it so it, it was all blender animated is that what you said yeah yeah i took the that that whole clip like the camera pan um motion tracked it in after effects because i for whatever reason in blend the motion tracker in blender was not working uh with the footage uh and i used a plugin that could convert the the tracking of After Effects into a scene for Blender, um, <clears throat> and that just gave you a tracked camera that was ready to go. And so then I could take a uh, I took like an armature and then put <clears throat> the basic shape of like the skeleton's body uh, with like just basic shapes on it, um, and then had animated that skeleton to move up. I mean, like it was just like a kind of like a s couple of spheres, really, to to rise up in the same manner that the skeleton was, uh, out of uh, a thing of water, um, and uh, and then simulated, you know, that, and I just have to make it so that the blender doesn't render that that fake body, um, and it just renders the water. Uh, and, and and then I can like compose that into the original footage. Um, uh, yeah, that's, that's more or less how I did it. Fair. No, that's really cool. Um, well, Val, well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. This was an absolute blast. Um, I'll say before before Thanks we for having me. yeah, of course. Uh, I'll say you know. So before we do end it off, uh, I do want to, you know, give you a chance to essentially let the viewer know where they can find you, all the, you know, communities, uh, projects, grant, like any links I'll go in the description, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, you know, f tell people where they can find you and the floor is yours. Uh, well, I guess where you'll see most of my stuff would be on my uh twitter i don't want to call it x uh nobody does where uh, <laughs> uh that one's just at a whale with a face um my the name displays as volgesicht but you can it, it's actually a whale with a face uh that's where most of whatever stuff i'm working on gets posted um it's really intermittent where like i'll have a burst of stuff going on and then like kind of a there's not much happening. It's like spurts, but stuff happening. And um, I really, I, if you wanted to like put up my YouTube, there really isn't much on there other than the, the videos that I post up there for advertising my worlds. Uh, and that's just at Volgesicht is like, because it's a unique name. So I got to have no numbers or anything. It's just at Volgesicht on YouTube. Um, and, uh, but I would point to Skits and Bits, um, YouTube channel, because we have all of our shows are posted there, um, as well as our skits and our sketches and our short films. You'll find the Great Meeple Heist there. Uh, and, and, um, I would also maybe share our, our, uh, our 
Discord and our 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 group, um, which I think I've shared in the in the in our channel. Uh, in your Discord, uh, but you know it's it's discord.gg slash skits n bits is our Discord, and I forget what the number is for the Jira Attack group, but you can it's on the screen or where are you gonna put it? I don't know. In the, uh, in the description, where are you gonna everywhere. find it? I, I, I'm, why am I talking? No, that camera's over here. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be on the screen and in the description. Um... But yeah, all right. Well, Val, well, well, I've been streaming it a long time, so I wouldn't post that. <laughs> Fair. Well, Val, well, thank you once again. This was absolute. It, it's cool to kind of hang out and you know, you know, get to learn more about you. Uh, I mean, we've worked together since Fest, and we never really got to have this type of cog. So it's it's really cool. I definitely definitely enjoyed it. So thank you for coming on the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was. First time I've been really interviewed for anything, so that's cool. I'm glad. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, everybody inside and outside the ballpark, that is it for episode 29 of the Nova Notes podcast. And apparently my VR is wanting to die as I'm doing this outro. But make sure to go check out uh, Vol as well as Skits and Bits and all the things down in the description. Uh, if you did enjoy this episode, uh, make sure to leave a like. Also, comment down below. What's your favorite type of improv? There's a lot of different tropes of improvs out there. But make sure to leave a comment down below. If you are coming back to watch some of the other episodes, uh, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Why not? You're already coming back anyway. And with that, I want to thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you in the next episode. Take care and peace. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Nobis Club.